What's up guys? This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect back with another edition of Mavs post game show and surprise surprise we have our first Mavericks victory of the NBA restart although it didn't come easy. The Mavericks had to go to overtime against the Sacramento Kings which is never what you want to hear but nevertheless the Mavericks scratch and claw to get their first win of the restart so in this game very different feel from the first two games whereas the first two games the Mavericks offense was firing largely on maybe not all cylinders but certainly at a high capacity offensively scoring 149 and then 115 respectively in the first two games this one this was a grind the Mavericks were sitting on 95 points at the end of regulation they were down 10 at the half their their lead was 4-3 and then they didn't regain the lead for the first time until overtime it was that kind of game for the Mavericks and yeah excuse me they weren't down 10 at half that was my mistake it was 60 to 56 I, as soon as I said that I thought nah, that didn't sound quite right but this is a game that went against the the patterns for the Mavericks the defense was much better in the second half giving up 35 points in the second half, not counting overtime, after giving up 60 in the first half. In the first half, the Mavericks shot only 37.5% compared to 50% for the Kings. Kings in the first quarter alone were 9 of 16 on threes, which I believe is the highest in a single period against the Mavericks. I don't know about team history, but certainly uh, you know the more modern era and everything we're talking about here. Uh, let's see. The difference for this, where the Mavericks were able to stay in this game, was getting to the foul line. In the first half, the Mavericks shot 27 free throws. 22 of 27 at the line. In the first half, half of their points came at the foul line almost. That's insane. That kept them in it, despite abysmal shooting from the rest of the team. Luka basically was a one-man mission, dropping his 16th triple-double of the year, his 10th 30-point triple-double of the year, 34 points, I believe a career-high 20 rebounds, and 12 assists. Now, that's not to say everything was working great for Luka. His hand got nicked up, his thumb, uh, three minutes into the game, and his three-point shot was still not great. But again, the Mavericks as a team couldn't throw it into the ocean from three. Let me take a look here. I want to see what the final numbers were before I dive further into this. So the Mavericks shot 37% for the game. 22% on threes. 9 of 41. The difference is they got to the foul line. 39 of 50. The Kings, 12 free throw attempts. 50 to 12. That is overwhelmingly weighted in the Mavericks favor and even when you can't throw it into the ocean from three as a team even when your you know your guys aren't making a lot of shots at the rim other than Luka who shoots a tremendous percentage at the rim I think something like 73 percent when he's within those few feet of the rim within the restricted area uh, other than him not a lot going the Mavericks do commit 17 turnovers but they rebounded well. They won the rebounding edge handily 61 to 47. Let's go into this here. So Luca was 12 of 24 for the game shooting, 8 of 11 at the stripe. The Mavericks did have a chance in, in regulation. They had a couple missed free throws from Maxi. Luca missed a big one as well with about a minute, I want to say a minute 17 left. But Luca played, I thought, good defense in overtime, especially couple blocks for him in this game as well and he made some big big plays for Dallas now he played 44 minutes to get this win I think Carlisle understood he needed to play you know his workhorse as much as he could because Dallas had to have this win they could not go on a skid like this as far as like forget forget the seven seed or any notion of moving up that's basically out the window anyway at this point your focus if you're Dallas needs to be coalescing and finding some kind of rhythm and building in confidence and I thought in the second half the adjustments they made defensively and that you saw guys like Luca even uh, batten down defensively and stretches as well really helped 
Another thing here, we got Tim Hardaway Jr. hitting some big threes. He came back with 22 points. Only three of nine on threes, but a couple of those were really big threes. Maxi Kleba came up with back-to-back -back brilliant plays in overtime that really let Dallas pull away. Uh, great. Gets switched on to De'Aaron Fox, who had 28 points. Sticks with him like glue. Bothers the shot. He might get a piece of it, but I think he just bothers the shot enough where De'Aaron Fox misses. And then the other way in a pick and roll with Luca, doesn't even have to do a pick and roll. He basically just slips the screen, spots up, flares out, and uh, that sets up for a spot up three for him. So big five point swing there for Maxi. And yes, Luca, as I said earlier, twenty rebounds. Even in the waning moments, Dallas wins this by four. But even in the waning moments, you're still getting big plays out of Luca. He goes to the basket, doesn't make it on the floater, but gets his own rebound and kicks it out to Tim Hardaway Jr. to continue eating up precious seconds off the clock for the Kings in their attempt to manage something here. So, yeah, other than the fact that you had stilted minutes for some of these guys. Now, I am glad KP was under 30 minutes. KP in 27 minutes, 22 points, 7 boards, 2 assists. Only 6 of 18 shooting, so his shot was not there. 0 of 7 on threes. So I'm glad that they didn't overexpose him in terms of his minutes. He does get a couple steals, if no blocks. But it was pretty much Luca Hardaway and Dorian Finney-Smith carrying the lion's share of the minutes. Dorian Finney-Smith, 16 and 16. I think 16 rebounds is a career high for him as well. Uh, he makes some of those free throws late. He had a lot of energy. You could see that that Rick was really looking up and down the roster trying to find some kind of spark for this team. He injected J.J. Barea back into the starting lineup. And, yeah, despite playing 14 minutes, J.J. Barea had very, very little impact for the Mavericks. One point, one rebound, one assist, 0 of 3 from the field, 1 of 2 at the line. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk that Berea's basically done at this point, that Father Time has caught him. I still contend that there's some juice left in the tank. Now, does that mean playing beyond this year? Probably not. But I think we saw enough spurts throughout the season that suggest that he's still got something left in the tank. I think it's just a matter of uh, kind of getting back into that real speed game action here. So something that even though you got a lot of time to rest, it's just something you can't really replicate. So I'm not going to give up on the notion of J.J. Brea still making some big, you know, playing some big minutes and making some big plays for the Mavericks throughout these final five games of this little stilted regular season and then into uh, the playoffs. But yeah, not a lot. Not a lot else to call out here. Justin Jackson got in, got some work. Other guys um, that I want to call out, Trey Burke in 24 minutes, 7 points. So Burke has fallen you know, safely back down to about the level we expected him to play. Certainly nothing like his first game against Houston when the Mavericks as a team just went nuts. But the third man for Dallas has been different in every game. It was Trey Burke in Game 1 against Houston. Game 2, then you had... Curry step up pretty... Nah, you know what? No. No. He had like 14 points, but I don't think he shot the ball especially well where you looked at it and said like, oh, there it is right there. Anyway, here you had uh, Dorian Finney-Smith kind of step up and fill that role. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. obviously stepping up and shooting the ball much better as well. So, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of getting that first win for Dallas. It's a gritty win. It's a clutch time win. Things that have been in very short supply throughout this season. So I'm happy to see them finally kind of steady themselves. You know, they had a moment where they could have crumbled. De'Aaron Fox, if he hits that jumper at the end of regulation and beats us, then that's probably one of those moments where this team really starts to question itself a little bit. But thankfully... They took advantage of that second life, that second opportunity, and they capitalized on it. Like I said, they had 95 points at the end of regulation. You give them five more minutes and they end the game with 114 points. That is gritty work. Luca, one thing I love here, Luca, two of six on threes. So he's done much better in identifying, hey man, I'm not shooting the ball great at all from three in these first three games back in the season. Like I said, he was one of 12 through two. He's two of six today. 
And, you know, even after he made the second one, he even kind of like threw his hands up like, oh, finally. Like it's that refreshing for him to see him make one. And I like that he's in attack mode right now. The minutes scare me a little bit. If you're going to have to play him 40 plus minutes a night for Dallas to, to do anything right now, that scares me. And I have some concern over the physical toll he might have to take attacking the rim this relentlessly. But it is something that Dallas can benefit from. He's finishing great all season, like I said, in that restricted zone. And if he just keeps attacking relentlessly, 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 he's making the right plays on some of these kickouts. And you got to think that you're going to get better shooting from the Mavericks as a team than freaking 22% 9-41. You're going to get better than that. Uh, let's see here. Other callouts. Any other callouts? Not a lot of blocks in this game in general. Two for Dallas, three for the Kings. Eight steals for the Kings compared to four for Dallas. That's always gone that way. The Kings, 37 fouls committed, Dallas 21. Like I said, the free throw discrepancy was insane. 12, 8 of 12 for the Kings, 39 of 50 for the Mavericks. You know, I I think the Kings are probably looking at this and thinking like, is this the 0-2? <laughs> is this the 0-2 Western Conference Finals just in terms of pure discrepancy? But I felt like Dallas really was the more aggressive team here. They kept attacking, particularly Luka kept attacking. And feast or famine, everything was either let's get to the rim or let's kick out for a bajillion three-point attempts and hope for the best. And for most of the game, that was not the case for Dallas, but it did balance itself out. So let me see if there's anything else specific I wanted to call out. Oh, this is from Bobby Corella on Twitter. He says, uh, here are the players who have ever matched Luka's stat line from today of 34 points, 20 boards, 12 assists. Kareem, Wilt, Elgin Baylor. That's it. That's according to basketball reference. Uh, that's insane. That is insane when you're on that kind of elite company. Mavs Highlights points out, you know, basically, hold on. Did the Mavericks just win a game in which they shot basically 37% and 22% from three? They did. And they were much better defensively in the second half, which is also weird to say. Uh, yeah, Luka's defense in the, in the overtime period as well very strong i think he's got flashes when he can dial in he's not a guy that's going to be ever a lockdown defender but he's not matador defense oh that just reminded me of that terrible matador nickname the mavericks tried to push on him for some reason for a while regardless this is a good win for the mavericks i'm not going to prattle on too much longer about this uh i'm i'm comforted knowing that they at least got sometimes just getting the first one is the hard part not saying like, oh, smooth sailing from now by any means. Obviously, they're going to have to answer after this because after this, they're going to have to contend with the Clippers. Excellent. They got the Clippers on Thursday night, 5.30 p.m. So, yes, that is going to be a very tough matchup. And then after that, they got the, the Bucks. Tough sledding, man. Tough sledding. But... Let's see how they do. In the meantime, that's going to do it for my time. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect.